regarding new data on the venetoclaxfentaximab combination, which was investigated within the so-called Murana trial, um, there is an update on the response, particularly with respect to the minimal residual disease negativity rate. So the Murana trial was a phase three trial comparing venetoclaxfentaximab versus BR, um, and venetoclaxfentaximab was not only given for six courses, but venetoclax give us continued afterwards as a kind of consolidation therapy for two years. Um, the first data which have already been published in the New England Journal at the beginning of this year showed a significant improvement in progression-free survival and also in overall survival for the venetoclax rituximab combination. Peter Hillman um, has presented data on the MLD rates um, in, the, in both treatment arms and not surprisingly the MLD negativity rate with venetoclax rituximab is much higher at the end of the induction treatment at nine months with 61% in comparison to 10% with BR. So what is interesting now what he's presenting is that with the continuous ven venetoclax treatment, the patients continue to be, to, to be MLD negative. Um, there are some very, very few progressions. There are some patients who change from being MLD negative to some small amount of minimal residual disease. Uh, but those patients usually also remain in remission. So there is some increase in the CLL load while being on venetoclax treatment in some patients. The majority is remaining MLD negative. So and of course we are all curious for the next update because then we will see how patients are doing after the time point when venetoclax is stopped after 24 months. And so the very interesting question right now is um, with the approval of venetoclax plus rituximab, it was approved last week by the FDA in the US and it's expected in autumn here by the EMA. So the question is how is this influence and sequence of treatment in CLL? So um, in, in most European countries for frontline therapy, still a lot of chemoimmunotherapy is used, particularly in those patients with good, um, good uh, pr uh, risk prognostic factors with regard to mutated IGVH status, for example. And so still the majority of the CLL patients in Europe is receiving chemoimmunotherapy and then in the sequence ibrutinib as first relapse treatment. So now with the new approval with venetoclax plus rituximab, the choice will be either ibrutinib as continuous treatment or venetoclax plus rituximab with the option to stop the treatment then after two and a half years. And I think this has to be discussed with every patient individually, how important it is for him to get off the drug um, for his treatment at a certain time point, or having the probably at least at the beginning more easy drug ibrutinib, because um, what is very important when patients are starting with venetoclax is to do the ramp up phase with a dose increase every hour over five weeks and doing the blood testing we learned that now from several analysis that's really crucial for the patients. So the initiating the treatment is a little bit more it's a little bit more work between physician and patient with venetoclax in comparison to ibrutinib but he has the option then to stop the treatment at some time point and when venetoclax is started, usually the treatment is well tolerated. Patients develop sometimes neutropenia, which can easily be treated with GCSF, for example. The patients who start on ibrutinib or um, are already on ibrutinib and are progressing, it's already now clear that then the treatment of choice after that is venetoclax. So the question uh, what to do when, patient, when a patient is on venetoclax and has not received ibrutinib before, how do they respond to ibrutinib afterwards? There are not yet many data available. There was a publication from the Australian group who has most experience with venetoclax from last year and they show that the majority of the patients respond to ibrutinib. However, we need more follow-up data on those patients and we probably will get these data also in the next time. With the venetoclax um administration, it means the patient is receiving at least, least for six times an infusion, so it's maybe more time consuming, but still an outpatient treatment for the patients. Um, in, in my experience, with the exception of the small patient um, proportion who do not tolerate rituximab very well, but in general that's not a problem for the patient that they spend for in six days a little bit more time in the in the hospital and in the hospitals in general with the 
uh, movement from chemotherapy to targeted drugs. Um, many patients receive now oral medication when they had infusions before. So in many hospitals there is enough space for still administering IV infusions with antibodies, for example.